Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. In this video, we'll go through Microsoft's recommended steps to ensure you get a successful update. This is part of my How To Guide series, a number of videos designed to help you get the best out of Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is for PC only. If you're using the Xbox, then check out this video. Link in the notes below. All the steps recommended here should be carried out before the update. So let's get started. Step 1. Let's ensure we install all available Windows updates. From the taskbar, select the Start icon and then the cog which is Settings. In the sub-menu that appears, choose Update and Security. In this new window, make sure you're on Windows Update. And it's here we can check if Windows is fully up to date. Click on Check for Updates. Windows will now search for any updates and advise if they're available for install. If there are updates available, update them and then reboot your computer. In my case here, the feature update to Windows 10 shown is actually the update to Windows 11. Before I venture into Windows 11, I'm going to get through the Microsoft Flight Simulator update first. So I'm not going to update this one, but I would update any other update available. Updating to Windows 11 is a whole category and subject in itself. I'm not going to cover it here. It's a personal choice that I've decided to stay with Windows 10 for now. We're not quite done with our Windows settings yet, so back to the main settings menu. And this time we're going to select Time and Language. Make sure you're on the Date and Time tab. And in the window that opens, we want to check that Set Time Automatically and Set Time Zone Automatically are both switched to on. Click Sync now to synchronize your timings and you're done. From the left hand side, select Region. And here you're able to just check that your time zone is correct. For me, I'm in the UK, so that's correct. And in terms of regional format, for most of us, the recommended setting is English United States. We need to use this for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Having done all that, this step is complete. This next step is a very important one. You need to open up Microsoft Store to ensure all apps are fully updated. You do this by left-clicking on the three dots on the very top right-hand corner and selecting Downloads and Updates. And in my case, you can see it's already got a DirectX runtime and some other apps being updated. But for the Microsoft Flight Simulator update, there are two that are particularly important. And if you don't have them, you should install them. The first one is the Xbox app for PC. This is a free download and you've probably already got it installed as part of Microsoft Flight Simulator. The second important one is Gaming Services. And once again, you should have this installed as default using Microsoft Flight Simulator. The automatic updates are now completed, but there may be other apps requiring an update. So click on Get Updates. Microsoft Store will now check that everything's up to date. And if any further updates are required, it will indicate as such. And here we can see I have another update, OpenXR for Windows Mixed Reality, which is a VR utility. This app is not necessarily directly linked to Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Windows Store will now automatically update that application. There we are, it's now done. And everything here is fully updated and installed as it should be. And we're done here. So in summary, you come to the Windows Store, you update all the apps and you're good to go. One more point is problems we experience with people not signing in with the correct Xbox or Microsoft account. Make sure you're signing in with the one that was used for the purchase of Microsoft Flight Simulator to avoid any potential download problems. The community folder is where you store your third-party add-ons and applications. I'm not going to cover in this video where you'll find your community folder. I've already done a video on this and there's plenty of information available already. But for this section you will need to know where your community folder is located. In my particular case it's on the D drive under MSFS. As I didn't choose the default location on the initial Microsoft Flight Simulator install. And there I have my community and official folders. The community folder is for third party apps as mentioned already. And the official and one store directories are for Microsoft product or products that you download and purchase directly from the marketplace. Microsoft recommend before any update you empty your community folder. Do not touch your official or one store directories. 
leave them alone. As you can see here, I've got quite a lot in my community folder. So to copy this information to another location or reinstall all of this after an update is quite a task. But there is a quicker and easier way to achieve this. What I do is select my community folder and select rename. And I'm going to rename it community underscore old. And I know this was my Active Directory previously. When Microsoft Flight Simulator boots, it will create another community folder by default. Or alternatively, if you want, you can create it yourself by just simply creating a new directory and naming it community. And our job here is done. Just a quick note on third-party applications, particularly after a SIM update. If you're experiencing CTDs or other problems, the chances are a third-party app has not been updated to accommodate for the changes made in the SIM update. So it is recommended you add back your third-party applications on a progressive basis. So if you do run into problems, you're able to ascertain which one is the culprit. You should also pay particular attention to any plugins, as they are most likely the chief culprits. On screen is just a few examples of a plugin application, which Microsoft recommend be uninstalled before any major update. Once you've completed all these steps, make sure before the update that you reboot your computer to ensure all these changes have taken effect. Microsoft also recommend that you delete your rolling cache and any manual cache established if you have one. It's a fairly quick and easy task. Let's have a quick look at how to do it. In Sim, we choose options from the top and then general options. And on the left hand side, we're looking for data. Click on that. Then if you page down, you'll be able to see your rolling cache settings. And one of them is delete rolling cache. Click on that and then click OK. The sim will now delete all information in the rolling cache. But also note that it's turned the cache off. And don't forget to apply and save. Now that the rolling cache is clear, I'm going to re-establish it. I'm going to update with an empty rolling cache. So I'm now going to click it back on. And in the rolling cache limit, enter the size I want. My personal choice is 32 gigs. Hit enter and then click on apply and save and the program straight away starts establishing the rolling cache. It only takes a minute or two normally, depending on your system. I now have my 32 gigs of rolling cache back and I know that it's empty. I'm ready for the update. If you found this information useful and helpful, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It does help the channel and subscribe for more of this type of thing. Thanks very much for joining me. Take care, look after yourself. See you soon and bye for now.